Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we can't stop, we won't stop, still more Dota, and it just ended here with, uh, I believe, the run of eight or something? I have no idea. Yes. Yeah, run of eight, run of four coming up next uh, tomorrow night. But for now, it's time for the SEA run of four. And it's gonna be a good one. Geek Fam versus TNC Pro Team. My name is Dragon of course. I'm joined, as always, by my trusty German friend, Skim Gaming. How are you doing today? I am super excited. This is pretty much what we've been waiting for these, this entire week, right? I mean, we've been casting SEA Five since day one, remaining. and, you know, we've been watching Radiant Geek Fam just, you know, back. sort of, like, grow into this Silence team where, you know, where they can take on TNC, right? Uh, I think going into this qualifier team, or people, uh, people had TNC as the uh, favorite, uh, for this qualifier spot, but I think following Geek Fem these past few days, I, in my head, they definitely can take it. Yeah, it's, it's a microcosm of a team just getting better and better. Like, it even uh, with just the two series that we watched, like in first uh, first uh, round of 12, they were looking a bit uh, shaky here. Th thankfully for them, up against uh, like uh, a lesser profile team, so they still managed to make it out 2 0. And then the next game, they've already got better. They fixed a lot of these issues, and right now, up against TNC, they can afford even less mistakes than even made in the last series if they want to win and uh, eliminate TNC because that's what it's all about. Single elimination all the way through here in these ESL one qualifiers, and this is no exception. The winner will move on to the best of five finals. The loser is out of the tournament. You know, you can just just by watching Five the bands or remaining. by looking at the bands, you can already tell that Geek Fam know that this is a different caliber of a team. Uh, really in this qualifier thus far, and in general, Geek Fam has been prioritizing Enchantress and Doom in the first band phase. Just two heroes, not necessarily because the enemies are just so good at these heroes, it's just because they don't like playing against them. They they consider these heroes to be a threat. But in this call, uh, in this in this game thus far, Geek Fam haven't even touched the Doom yet. Instead, they chose Ten to ban the Night Stalker remaining. and the Bounty Hunter instead. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense considering Tim's is one of the best roamers in SEA, potentially even the best one, right? Uh, there's so many heroes that you need to consider. So taking out only two, I mean, you can't take out all of them, right? I can. Yeah. I mean, they, they haven't even banned the Earth Spread. Obviously, also one of his signature, or pro probably the signature hero uh, for him, and. It's just so difficult to really bend out of uh, bend out all of those. So that's why TNC get away with the Nyx Assassin, pretty much also one of one, one of his signature heroes. Um, but also Geek Fam, you know the Shadow Shaman. We've seen yep. them done great things with this Shadow Shaman. All yeah. in the Shadow Shaman has done really has had insane reactions. They've been able to set up so many kills. We've seen the Queen of uh, what was it? I don't I don't remember which hero it was. Uh, uh, hero just blinking in and immediately getting shackled, getting hexed. I don't know. It was. It was a brewmaster, wasn't it? It was a brewmaster. Yeah. 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 Radiant. Screw your initiation. Just, just in immediately get hexed. Yeah. Immediately get hexed, get orchided. Like the, the. They are definitely getting to be more and more on point here, as as, as I was saying here, as the qualifier goes on and Shadow Shaman just going back to the comfort zone here, especially with a hero that's becoming more and more popular these days. I feel like that brings so much to the table, right? You're so good at trading early on with the insane base damage that you have, second only to, I believe, Five Tree and Protector. Um, and you have so much lockdown, you can combo it up even in the landing stage with heroes like Juggernaut that can provide a lot of early damage to get some easy kills in offlanders, even someone like an Omni Knight, who doesn't necessarily want to skill repel early on. And as you were saying, the instant initiation plus the push potential from the Serpent Wards, not to mention the team fight prowess that that brings you. So it's uh, it's a one size fits all kind of hero from a support position, really. Uh, Geek Fam also taking out the Brute Mother. Uh, yesterday, TNC did, of course, even though it wasn't uh, on stream, but TNC did take out. I don't have the name. Uh, the 496 Gaming. The, oh yeah. the, 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 the Vikings, was it? 496 Vikings, yeah. yeah. The. Um, Squad from Thailand. They uh, brute mothered them twice. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I think. I think oh, in the best Vietnam, of three like I this. I, keep mixing them up. I think in the best of three like this, you want to avoid getting brute mothered as much as possible. It just oh, yeah. does things to you mentality-wise. Uh, getting you know, getting like a fourth or fifth pick brute mother and having to adjust your game in. Uh, like, I mean, we've, we've cast it yesterday. Yeah. Navi and CIS, you yeah. know, they got brute mothered and. It was rough. Five seconds it was really rough. Yeah. And it, I mean, almost, almost they were almost able to do it. But again, playing against the hero like Brute Mother just changes so much yeah. about the dynamics of the heroes and about your own lineup and how to approach the game yeah. that it becomes like a completely different game. So it's good to take uh, those kind of heroes out, uh, especially against uh, a team like TNC. Again, TNC, one of the best teams in SEA right now. And I think if you're Geek Fam, you look at you look at TNC, and no offense to the other teams, but I think if you're if you're Geek Fam, you look at them and, and consider, well, if we manage this hurdle, 
is the finals really going to be that much more difficult? Five I mean, yeah, it's still remaining. a best of five, but still, you know, TNC is yeah. pretty much the team to beat at the moment in this qualifier. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Boom ID feels a clutch game, and still be our second match. Boom ID actually taking on Happy Feet. So we're going to see what the fi uh, final opponents will be after this series, but for now, got to <laughs> finish this challenge first. Gyrocopter, Phantom Light. We haven't talked about the Silencer yet. Uh, how, how do you like that as an early pick here? Uh, I like it. It's uh, it, it can be exploited. Um, there's been a couple of teams in NA, especially I think Complexity was it. You know they they like to draft it very early on in the first three. It can be exploited, but generally speaking, I do think it's a very safe pick. Um, it just provides a little bit of stable lane support and in general silencer. I mean, we talked about this I think thoroughly yesterday. Some heroes. They don't really do well Your when you're behind. When you're behind, what, what do you do? What, what do you still provide, right? Do you still have value that you can provide to the team? And Silence is one of those heroes. Global Silence is a huge, uh, huge ability that just allows your team yeah. to take fight that you would otherwise not be able to take. And um, that's to why some extent, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Global Silence in particular is, can be counterplayed. And Ten sometimes, if, if you don't have the damage or control anyway, because the rest of the team is also super behind, Five it sometimes it feels like it doesn't really matter that everyone's silenced for a while. True. But. Other than that, like if you're only like a little bit behind, if you just need that extra bit of edge, or if you use that to secure one crucial kill to prevent uh, the instant like save from something from the rest of the team, that can still make a difference. Mm -hmm. But in general, you know, it's a it's a very it's a very stable lane support. Uh, has the glaives to harass with, which is actually very underrated, I think. Yeah. Uh, because it obviously doesn't attract Crave Aggro, so that makes it just very easy to zone, or not easy to zone out uh, offliners, but you know, comparatively easier, uh, easier in comparison to other heroes. Ten seconds and remaining. of course, the silence can come in handy in, in the laning stage as well. But generally speaking, Five I think it's a very just remaining. safe early pick, really. Yep. Uh, we'll see whether they can actually deal with this. What I assume to be a, a offlane tusk with the undying helping out. Very likely, a very yep. nasty offlane. Yeah, I, be, I believe I've seen March a lot on the Tusk. The thing is, the, position. the thing is for Geek Fam though, if this dual offlane doesn't work out and they actually, you know, give up a couple of kills, I mean, suddenly you have like an Undying with not enough mana to cast like all of those spells. Same with Tusk. Oh yeah, that's a very real risk. Uh, I mean, it sounds kind of stupid that it. I mean, I mean, but it is part of the Silence of Hero, right? And definitely we've seen heroes like that spiral out of control, where suddenly you find yourself. Well, I mean, I can maybe cast like all my spells once, but that's about it. Yeah. No point where you even have to itemize uh, against that here, but believe in the drums, even though you don't necessarily want to, or other kind of stat items uh, to try and mitigate that. But well, we'll see how the early game goes. I mean, Silencer, as you said, very solid lane support, like uh, up against solo hits. heroes who can focus more on the last word and just the Glaive Harass. But if you're up against more than one hero, the Arcane Curse becomes that much more efficient. So it's uh, now with the Medusa and the Phantom Lancer, they have two very strong cores with a lot of scaling potential. They also have. Um, the control from the Nyx Assassin, plus the scouting potential that he gives you, Ten and the Omni Knights remaining. also has is that safety net essentially. Yeah. I Five almost feel like this would this was a. I mean, obviously, it, I do think it does fit TNC's lineup, but I also think it's a bit of a deny pick, and I think that's why it took a little bit of time for them to actually pick it, um, because I think it would have been a fantastic pick for Geekfam. Geekfam with a. Oh. Select your uh, heroes. That's a hero we haven't seen in a long uh, time. Yeah, I. Can't remember the last time I've seen him play it actually. Looks like it's a mid Naga then versus yeah. the Musa, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is uh again, I do think the Dusa would have been a fantastic pick for Geek Fam. Um I'm not sure which team it was, but we've seen this kind of like lineup before, right? We have like four very active heroes, like one carry that can play really well in, in form of the gyrocopter, right? Just fight with the team and then you have to do so as a fallback. But that being taken away, technically speaking, Naga Siren still does the same thing in the sense, right? Where she wants to farm, she wants to be by herself, and then you have the other four uh, playing around her or playing without her effectively. The thing is, her, uh, Naga Siren's impact is completely different. Like, after 30 minutes, or after, let's say, 40 minutes, on the one hand, you, ha you would have a Dusa who could just you know, join a fight with Butterfly, Scotty, and just can kill everybody. On the other hand, you have a Naga Siren that's just going to siege with illusions. Yeah. Um... And, I mean, with the Dusa, with the Phantom Lancer, they do have two heroes that can technically deal somewhat well with those illusions. Um, the longer the game goes and the tankier the illusions get, it's going to be more difficult. But generally speaking, it's not... I don't know. I'm not going to say 
it's a bad pick by any means, but I think it's just uh, it, it feels like a very lackluster pick right now. Yeah. Well, we'll see whether they can make it work. Bit of a pause, we can go through these lineups. Again, we still don't quite have a ticket, so not all of them use the proper names. You've got Oli, Chuan, and March. They are the right ones. Fam, also known as Play Hard, and this guy on a gyrocopter is Skimbaloo. On the other side, we've got TNC. I got me if I'm wrong, but of course, Tim's in 1437. Mid only should be Cuckoo. Raven on the Phantom Lancer, and then Sam H on that offline only night. Sounds about right. Still gonna. Uh, I. They have some very like names that might not be the best to always say out loud on broadcast. So I might just refer to them as the hero names, to make it easier. I think that's uh, probably the best for now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm looking at this Omni Knight. I'm like, well, you know, I, w I would love to be able to say it. Yep. I think it's like well, a good exclamation mark <laughs> after yeah. like a team fight. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, it kind of fits with the hero, right? Sometimes that here that is what his name is. Yeah, you know? he actually is. Well, DC censored himself somewhat with the star with the stars coming through. But yeah, game number one of this best of three series Seven just getting started here in ESE A round of four for the ESL one getting the qualifiers. Should be a good one here and uh Huh, with all this commitment up top. Could they even go for an aggressive lane here of some sort? They they could. They could. I don't think they necessarily should because Phantom Lancer is a very difficult hero to kill early on. Yeah, you do have Snowball and Shards, I guess. But um, the battle begins. I mean, if, if they could probably start it aggressively just to give the Jackal a little bit of head start, and then they could technically just rotate everybody down. But looks like if anything, they're just gonna rotate the Jackal to down again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Down. All right. Only not already there, intercepting him. Maybe looking for also a creep pull across. Another TP coming through from the support. Don't all f always see that. Sometimes you just see them hold on to the TP and uh, um, they just walk down. But having the three one doesn't really change too much. Just just need to make sure that you don't miss out on any CS or experience here for that matter. Yeah, I prefer this landing setup much more, the Tusk Undying dual lane. Yeah. Uh, it definitely does force the Silencer up top here. And they can still sort of contest the Phantom Lancer farm. They won't be able to really kill him, but they can threaten the Silencer, which is, which is huge. Yeah. Might even be able to force out an early point on Doppelganger here. Like, he's already started to drop very, very low. Another DK will be coming up in a second. Yeah. He's held on to the point because he realized, hey, maybe I need this to get across these eye shots. So now, you don't have that extra bit of wrath potential from the Spirit Lance for a little while. And that's just the strength of the Omni Knight, right? Especially with a t someone like a Tusk to actually give yourself, give that extra bit of control. For mid lane, we have Tim's just being a nuisance. This is, um, you know, how most teams choose to play the mid, uh, mid position, uh, four position. Just make sure that the mid laner has a good start, and then you know, in like a minute or two, Tim's will likely just disappear. Give the Deuce some free experience. Uh, for now, just a mana burn spam, throwing out some stuns here and there. Trying to make Juan's life a living hell. But uh, that used to be like, I don't want to say classic mid hero, but uh, that used to be the Nagas Iron Lane, even, even back when it was played more often, right? Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. You definitely want to run her in the mid lane because you have more control over the map with the illusions. You can just farm the creep camps, you know, have control of the runes as well with the illusions. So, it makes a lot of sense to run her in the mid position. Um, it's not necessarily easy to kill the hero, unless you have like... A, unless you have like a roamer with like really high kill, kill potential. Just because, I mean, what, she's sitting at 7 armor right now? Yep. 760 HP? Stout shield? You're not gonna kill her. Yep. Or it's very unlikely. We're gonna try perhaps anyway, silencer. Uh, he's going seven. for the Korea, man. Oh, might actually Screw get it, Naga. Yeah. Get the Korea! Ah, another one! Ah, I can't get it off. And now... <laughs> oh no! Oh, not there though! I mean, they kind of have to. Uh, now, I mean, Dusa, I think if I'm Dusa, I'm just gonna go in there with a Creep Wave. Oh, if 1437, like, I mean, <laughs> if he, he can just walk up to this high ground. Like, oh if, no! Oh god. And we missed the first blood top. <laughs> they do get the Phantom Lancer because the Silencer isn't here. Yeah. And they do get the Korean. They do get the Korean. Alright, alright. We're a bit preoccupied with the courier because, like, if you sit him right there, you can get vision from it off the high ground. So, if one for three seven walked there earlier, could have gotten that for himself. But as it stands, they get the courier. 
they continue to harass down an Argus Siren, but first blood in the hands of this dual offlane. Finally making it work. It does and seem like oh, a... Mid lane. Still standing around here. Arcane Curse, the stun will connect, and this should be a dead doozer. Maybe met though, and Mirror Image trying to create some chaos, trying to juke and jive, and... and almost enough. But the last right click from mid only will make it happen. TB out from Tim's, yeah, like, decay and absorb is actually enough to get that kill. Just uh, before the TP come through. Really good rotation. He's able to harass the Dusa quite a little bit as well, which is really important. Um, yeah, this laning stage, it does seem as if Geek Fam was just, you know, content with sort of sacking the Naga Siren. And I mean, honestly, I can I'm not sure how much I've talked about this, but obviously, you know, the mid lane, losing the mid lane that, or losing the mid laner a couple of times, isn't that, isn't that bad? Especially yeah. a hero like Naga Siren that can come back and, you know, that is usually the kind of hero yeah. to just fall back into the jungle for like 20 minutes anyway. It's really not that bad. Um, as long as they give themselves a head start on the side lanes, I think this is a very okay trade. Not a favorable one, but it's still a very okay trade. Yeah. And they're slightly winning the uh, carry battle here into Bossy S. Phantom Lance is going go on again. Shadowshaman is dead indeed, so plus two for Silence and top lane. Well, as long as that doppelganger is up and running. Oh no, they're going for the Jark off the bottom hard. as well. Oh, wow. They're diving past yeah. the T1 tower even. TP coming through, self will get a bit of extra health points out. Now the TP, they actually rocket barrage down one, and now bullshit down half health with another rocket flying. The shackles kill Tim's in place. One or two more tower shots that should be enough to get that kill too. Uh huh. Well, it overzealous from TMC. Yeah, you don't always see rocket barrage being skilled, but in these kind of circumstances, you see how powerful that spell actually is. It's doing so much damage. Um. Unfortunately, it does force the Jarak off the back, and in some ways, this is even better than getting a kill on him. Obviously, you don't want to lose two heroes in, in the pursuit, but forcing him back, it just costs so much time because he has to yeah. walk all the way back, wait for until uh, wait until he regions up, and then he has to TP out. I don't know why he didn't just try an up, actually. That is available, but that, that might need it for, uh, for the Naga Siren later. That's actually that no, that is actually a really good point. Naga Siren needs all these strange charges as possible. Top lane, the Phantom Hunter is being dove. And they're gonna try for sure, but now turn around with an extra nuke from the Spirit Land. The stick keeps him alive, does also have himself coming in through the backpack. And now another shot here, fam. He's still going. Another couple of right clicks, but the decay coming through just now. Snowball onto the illusion, delaying this a little bit more. Bit of a ring around the rosy. Meanwhile, I believe uh, Ollie ended up dying somewhere else entirely. They snowball the main hero, they might not have a kill. Absolutely. Bottom yeah. lane, the gyro in now. Ugh. Just kills all over the map. Uh, aggression at the very least, all over the map. Last word will proc, and on TP though, as Ollie makes his way back. He's become much tanker since he uh, since he last uh, has been here on the lane. He picked up a ring of, a ring of Aquila and the Bracer. Yeah. So this is not an easy kill anymore. I mean, it, it already wasn't before, right? Yeah. As it turns out, three heroes might not be enough yeah, if you have to. If he can juke through the trees. Mid lane, by the way, in terms of CS, Naga Siren, yeah, Medusa is pulling ahead, but Naga Siren is still holding her own. Yeah. And this is, I guess, also one of the strengths of the Naga Siren hit. Again. All right, 1.57 is dead. Rocket is flying. Uh, maybe not the heals and the repel. On the night having that available. Uh, it is worth noting that some of these, some of the CS is obviously jungle creeps for the Naga Siren, right? Yeah. But it's still, that's the power of the Naga Siren, being able to farm creep camps and wave at the same time, or very efficiently at least. Um, well, as I say that, he's actually missing an entire wave. Come on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the power of the hero. And that's uh, that's also one of the perks of picking up a hero like Naga Siren, because that way you don't necessarily lose the economy war. Yeah. Especially once that Radiance gets up and running, I do have to assume that this is uh, the way that Yuan wants to take this. I and think it's um, been four years since I've last seen a professional Lagos Siren player not build a ring. Yeah. And even then it didn't work, so I... Uh, yeah, at least I, in the core role, right? Support yeah, heroes... Yeah, support heroes is a story. completely different question. Uh, but yeah, this, uh, this, this, this has to be the Radiance build. I can't imagine anything else at this point. I mean, hey, I'll, I'll gladly see something else and <laughs> see it work, but I'm not convinced yet. Top lane. Oh, stop lane. They continue to try, low. but Tusk starting to take a lot more damage here. Another Spirit Lance. Nice ice shots here, forcing him to walk around with the Phantom Rush going. He still gets a kill. Doppelganger holding on to that. More action as well. To get the himself Silencer. out. Yeah. The um, Nyx Assassin wrapping around. It's not even a Vedetta, just an Invis Rune. Let's go from stun, just a mana burn, forcing out another TP rotation. 
again, like every single time I see a Nyx assassin picked, I always see him find a uh, find an Invis rune. <laughs> it's before level six. It's so crazy. I just rock smiling upon you. It's yeah. Same, you know, with the DD runes. Yeah. Need to win a game. Spawn a DD rune. Need to make sure that you've prayed to the RNG gods as well as Ice Frog. I like that the Shadow Shaman completed his TP. Technically, he could have cancelled it because, you know, they they saw that the Nyx, that they weren't going to pursue the kill any, any further. But they grouped up. They grouped up and smoked up. I don't think this is a movement that Fight! TNC would expect. Yeah. Simply because it also, doesn't necessarily make any sense to rotate this early. Not that this ward here is a false sense of security for mid only. Gonna get punched up in the air, called on everything being dropped. Onto Medusa, she was farming up this ancient stack. Some of the big ones are still alive. Yeah, they, they might be able to uh, finish <laughs> these off unless they want some more kills or perhaps the tower instead. Nah, they really don't have the damage. You, you could tell they were thinking about, hey, let's just take these two ancients. It's just two ancients. But <laughs> none of these heroes deal any significant Radiant's damage to ancients at the moment. I, don't know. I think they could have oh, the bullied them Whoa. down together. I don't think it would have been worth it. They just needed to use the power of friendship, man. You have to believe. But yeah, oh. this was a really, this was a really uh, cool movement. They pushed at the side waves Radiant's and then they immediately tp uh, mid high. and just smoked up together. That was such a cool move. Um, could have technically backfired if there had been a ward behind the T1 tower, which is not that Radiant's uncommon of a ward. Yeah. But yeah, they they made it work. Uh, it's a good Dusa kill. It's not that big of a deal for the Dusa either. Don't think she actually lost that much gold. Yeah. Still gets farm up as if nothing happened really. Still sitting on top of the net worth chart together with the Phantom Lance actually. Despite Radiant's his aggressive lane uh, with attack. the Tusk and the Undying PL still sitting in 4.2k oh, and now might be able to find another kill. Gyrocopter can be run down but doesn't want to commit past that particular area towards the tier 2. Especially with Ollie TPing in as I say that though he's turns, in, turns it around on him. Another Spirit attack. Lance, another one available in a second. Plenty of illusions to work with then Forcing out yet another rotation. Doppelganger already used its high level, so it's gonna be off cooldown in a little while, but not just yet. The shackles, the punch, they will punish this aggressive movement there from a Raven. Guys. <laughs> very important kill to get. Very, very important kill. I mean, you just highlighted that he was actually the second highest in net worth, right? Radiant's so taking him off the map is really important. <laughs> Unfortunately for Geek Fam, though, they, they're kind of losing sort of control over the Radiant's map yeah. little by little. I mean, they've just fallen. lost the tier one bottom and they haven't really Radiant's been testing it for like two minutes now. Uh, the top lane, they were also technically getting pushed in. The glyph just oh, expired oh, just as the boulder that was on the way from the CHQ pit. Yeah, all bottom it. lane, they spot out the Gyrocopter. Oh. He's all by himself right now. Pops the drums though. So he might just be fine because the Nyx is not going to get close, or is he? Oh, he's still need some help though, I mean... Fall down, we'll make sure oh, that uh, they slow down a little bit, but Omnid obviously doesn't care. But he's still alive now, Omnid are isolated, still gets a kill with the purification. Rocket flies, there's also Tombstone down. 1437 tries to get rid of it, cannot quite finish the job, so Omnid Knight will have to do it in the end. But double kill for play hard here. I'm dying the raid boss. Yeah. Just walks up. It's really difficult Dyer's to bring him down. Top. That's the power of the attack. Undying and the Tusk early on. You know, they're really difficult to contest. Dyer's and I mean, they're showing how, how strong they can be with the early... It was just small rotations, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you lose the Gyrocopter, but they get two kills in return. And it just gives the Undying a little bit of an edge as well in terms of net worth. Yeah. Which is really important as well because, I mean, it is a four position Undying. And it's not easy to farm up. Oh, top lane? Uh, that is a silencer here, so no doppelganger for him. He just gets punched to oblivion. Alright. That works. Didn't expect him to actually drop with just one punch, but... Yeah, one punch man, right? I guess oh, it's... Is, is that the popular meme? I have no idea. Popular anime. They, uh... <laughs> Oh, this gonna is try. Gonna they're time. gonna find him. Yes, just only just. I think the sound already finished. Stole uh, would delay this for a couple seconds. They're chasing the Dusa on the dire side. Oh, this is much more significant here. Rocket is flying. Tombstone down as well for the extra bit of slows. Way too much control and damage here with the max out rocket barrage at this point. I really like this play from Skemaloot. Maxing that out, joining up with the rest of his team because they realize, hey, we have an undying. We have a task. Like we have this early game power. We also have a gyrocopter with this skill build that fits very well into that. So, yeah, make use of that. Get sure. as much map control as we can. Just make uh, TNC think twice about engaging into our jungle so that Medusa, uh, uh, so that uh, Naga Siren can farm. Attack. And that's what it really comes Dyer's down to. Chuan still a little bit behind, but back up to 5k net worth. So, Radiance not too far away if they buy him a little bit more space. 
That's also really like, just like the item build from the Gyrocopter. You know, investing into both the Ring of Aquila and the and the drum. Um, it just allows him to be him and his team really to just take the fight to the enemy early on. I mean, that's what we kind of discussed during the draft. You know, the idea of this lineup is to just fight us four, just leave the Naga Siren as alone as possible, just make sure that you just draw the attention, uh, ideally trade as favorably as possible, and just, you know, hope for the best effectively. So, and thus far, it kind of worked out, I think. Yeah, you're you're losing a little bit of control over the side lanes, which is a bit unfortunate, but you've gotten two crucial kills on the Dusa, you've gotten a crucial yep. kill on the Phantom Lancer, and the Jackcopter, while he's falling behind in farm a little bit, I mean, it doesn't really matter as long as the rest of the team is still Radiant's doing well, right? We have yeah. the Tusk also doing attack. pretty well in terms of net worth. Yeah. We have the Radiant Undying doing pretty well in terms of net worth. Yeah, as, as long as they do well as a unit, yeah. uh, it can still work. But it is still worrisome that Medusa, despite all these deaths, um, he's still sitting in 7.5k, still at the top of the net worth chart. So they need to keep this kind of momentum going. They cannot really stop at all, or else things might just uh, go crazy, right? Or and then we'll, I guess, we'll see how well the Naga Siren of all farm Naga Siren will match up against the Farm Medusa in the end. Speaking of Naga Siren, they started to ping her out. Tim's is looking for her with haste. I swear, this is the third time, or, or at least the second time, I've seen him with a haste. Yeah. Um, pings out the Naga Siren together with the Phantom Lancer should be an easy kill. Yeah, there, there is a Song of the Siren though. And Xuan, not sure if he realizes that he's in danger. Spider senses are tingling. Well, there it is now. Need a bit of extra new quick power. There's global silence coming through to make sure that there's no Song of the Siren. Meanwhile, also helping out uh, the Omni Knight here. He was gone on, I believe, by the rest of Geek Fam. So well timed ultimate there from 1437. That was a really important kill. I mean, the Naga Siren is just sitting in front of the Sacred Relic. She can almost smell it. <laughs> That's how close she is, but unfortunately she won't be able to pick it up just yet. And delaying the Radiance is really all what this is about. You cannot... You won't be able to prevent the Radiance from being picked up, but you can at least delay it. And if you pick up crucial items along the way, hey, why not? And we already have a Diffusal Blade on the Phantom Dancer. Yep. And, I mean, as much as, you know, on the Radiance side we have four heroes trying to fight with one another, uh, together rather, and just against the opponents, on the, on the dire side, it's almost the same idea, in a, in a way. Not as, you know, obviously not as proactive as the Radiant one, but they don't want to involve the Dusa in these fights early on at all. So the Phantom Hunter has to be the kind of hero to just sort of be all up in the enemy's face and trying to look for fights, trying to join the fights. Yep. And with the Diffusal Blade, it's much easier now. There's so much more threat potential with that in your inventory. Still not really tanky, right? So if you do get caught out, you can still drop very, very fast, and it might be something that Geekvam will be looking towards here. Just try and find the real Phantom Lance. A single shackle should be enough to seal the deal there, especially with the global silence on cooldown, so unable to cancel that out. But finding that in first place is the extra issue, and well, doppelganger. All the illusions trying to get rid of the tombstone immediately. It's being healed up. They actually somehow find the real one with the hacks, with the stun, with the punch. Yeah, he just doesn't come down. He just dropped the Aether Shock. Alright, this is the guy yeah. that doesn't take any damage. Alright, I'll shackle it. Or, well, not any damage, but you know, that's the hero that uh, the, the unit to take the least amount of damage. Yeah. Sometimes it can be, even be hard to click the right hero or the right oh, units sure, with sure. so many things around. But well, we area. mentioned it during the draft. Ollie on the Shadow Shaman has been fantastic throughout this entire qualifier. Oh, they dropped oh, yeah. a Sentry. They oh see Oh my the god! Assassin. You're just saying it. Absolutely amazing play, Tims, with a snowball. Trying to lay this a little bit, but cannot really time the stun as he's being stunned himself. They've been pinging it out for a while. I think I think one of them got body blocked just ever Maybe, so yeah. slightly, and they were like, alright, he has to be here somewhere, and that was just heads up play. Medusa shouldn't should be fine here. They can't really dive this, especially with the Omni Knight. Oh actually his TP got cancelled, so he's not committing to this. Okay. They could turn around now, maybe. Uh I, I guess actually at, at this yeah. point they kind of need the Dark Hopper as well for this kill. She does have the Hurricane Plank, making it much more difficult to kill her because shards themselves aren't going to keep her in place. Yep. Not to mention the stone gains, like, uh, unless you burst all of her mana on the initial assault, essentially, you'll not be able to get that off and just run away if nothing else. We have a radiance. Uh, an 18 minute radiance. Not bad considering, actually. Yeah. Two deaths. On top lane, gyrocopter. Speaking of deaths. Uh, yeah. I was looking at mid, but then I looked at top because of you. There's another kill here. One for one trade. Sansa dying first. Uh, thankfully, so it doesn't get any more experience. But now Phantom Lance is taking over. Slowing down. Play hardy on the undying. Drops on a tombstone as well as Zoltwit. A very big heal. 
But also very big damage still coming through from these two core heroes. It's good that you stayed mid because top they actually didn't give, kill the jackal. Yeah. <laughs> that dude is fast with drums and phase boots. Oh yeah. yeah. Radiance middle also agility hero. Osfrog. Four percent extra movement speed at this point. Now TP mid here to try and deal with that. Him setting up on a high ground for safety, I guess. A bit of a concern for the Radiant right now, or for Geekfam, that they're losing heroes and towers this quickly. As much as you still have the Naga Siren to sort of, you know, fall back on, you cannot afford to lose your map this this early on against the Dusa Phantom Lancer. Yeah. It's just going to make it that much more difficult for the Jackcopter to catch up at farm. And he has to catch up at farm. As much as he's about to, you know, try to fight with the opponents, or uh, trying to fight with his teams, uh, with his team against the opponents, he needs farm as well because at some point he's going to fall off and not. That's good. Shadow Blade snowballing up on the Phantom Lancer here. Follow up is there, but also the turn run with the Global Silence. They're able to run it out. The stun will miss from Tim's. Mana burns away the rest of what Task has to offer. Now the Stone Gaze trying to chase him away, but hey, there's a counterplay. The song of the Siren makes it completely useless. Now the call on Repel on Medusa, so mid only can still fight, but they lose the Phantom Lancer, they lose the Only Knight, they lose the Nyx Assassin. They're all very much alive and kicking. The Repel not lasting long enough. Medusa gets controlled up on the TP out. Ray, uh, Rukuku in complete panic, and it's a double kill for the Shadow Shaman to close out this particular team fight. What a play! I didn't. I honestly didn't even consider this. Yeah. The, the complete reset button of the stone gaze, right? Uh, and then obviously, you know, setting up with the tombstone. Uh, also one of the classic combos, actually. And then they were able to turn it around with the call down as well. Yeah. Beautiful combo involving the Naga Siren this early on, with just the radiance, secures them a tower, secures them a team fight, yeah. and, and a second tower. A second tower, yeah. Drop down the wards, and um, Naga Siren is in there. Finds an illusion rune. All right. All right, the rune game is strong with both teams in this game so far. But yeah, I mean, this kind of fight is extremely important because as <laughs> valuable yeah, as the Radiance is on Nagarstown for obvious reasons, it is not the be-all, end-all. It's a tool. It's a step along the way. You still need to use that to farm up and get these next big items. The Manta style in particular, very useful this game. The Boots of Travel, just for mobil mobility. And then these tanky items like Heart or Skadi and uh, the Octarine core eventually as well. So you can then um, do a decent amount of damage, but also keep spamming out these illusions time and time again to keep the lanes pushed out. Uh, especially important since these tier 2 towers of theirs have already taken a little bit of punishment. This is, this is really where, where it's going to start for the Nagasarin. Already doing a good job with the illusion rune, as you mentioned earlier. No. Just instead of instead of uh, just you know farming your own side of the map, you just farm the enemy jungle. Yeah. Um, clear a shit on the camps and just pushing out the waves really. Another smoke coming out from the radiant. They just really don't want to give them a rest. Thing looks like they want to look for yet another fight. I mean, that's a, kind of the power of this lineup. They can just keep on fighting. They're not really reliant on any specific cooldown. Uh, yeah, the Nagas the song of the siren is actually a big cooldown that they need to rely on, and there's like big engagements. But for like quick pickoffs, what what ability do they really need to wait for? Well, timer this one here. Couple of seconds here, pretty damn quick, but now Global Silence not gonna help them too much. TP will be cancelled. That's another Global Silence without effect. One of the three seven, you might even die for this too. Snowball connects him, the shots block him in, but it also blocks them out. Still, Gyrocopter with a range, and it is a play hard. It grabs a kill with a DK. The TP cancelled, that was a free invitation to just continue pursuing yeah. the silencer. I'm surprised they're actually moving to this mid lane because they do have wards up. They could have. Oh, never mind. They're gonna go Roche. Yeah. I was gonna say they could have technically gone for the tier two, but yeah, Roche makes sense as well. With the Phantom Lancer down, or uh, not down, but with the Phantom Lancer canceling his TP, uh, they know that he can't contest this. And of course, the Omni Knight and Silence are down. Global is down, which is a huge ability as well. Yeah. Awesome. And the Song of the Siren is up. Yep. So there's no way you fight into this. You know, after the fight, after the fight, and after the tier two, Naga Siren was uh, just had a BOT, and now she has a Yasha, and uh, working on the match cell. Yeah. Power of Naga Siren, man. It's building this momentum so so much. It doesn't really show in the graphs just yet, just because, but uh, it actually does. Look at this advantage that TNC had earlier. Six K now back down to zero line because of the series of events, experience starting to go in favor of Geek Fam as well now and. This is getting kind of scary because Medusa, like, we've seen how the Stone Gaze doesn't, isn't really the hey we win the team fight now button because you either have to run away or you stand and fight and get, get turned into stone. It's not that this game because of the Naga Siren. So 
You, you need more. You need plenty of big items on Medusa if you want to have a shot. I feel like TNC is playing a little bit too passive with how the game has been going. Uh, their lineup doesn't necessarily fight that well into the Radiance. Oh, what a oh, hex coming through again. Sentry. Next Assassin. Trying to scout out, but gets scouted out himself. And now the rest are coming mid only. Punch up into the air. Force of cross the eye shots. So Caldon will slow them down. Same for the tombstone it's somewhere. I up on the high ground, of course. And we'll yeah. chase him away to secure the tier 2. Even fighting with the Naga side, and sometimes you see these kind of plays with uh, the Naga on the other side of the map just farming up, pushing out these other lanes, but... Um, again, just having that power in the front lines is so, so important. Now so well, we'll connect here onto Medusa, punch up into the air. No follow-up just yet. Rocket will be dodged by the repel. And just get the tower and get out. Down, yeah. Again, I think TNC has been a little bit too passive. Uh, this, in these past, what, what, five, eight minutes? They sort of allowed... Oh. Allowed uh, Geek Fam to initiate on them. And I feel like they could they could easily just smoke up... Uh, that's what they're doing. They could easily <laughs> just smoke up and try to force a fight uh, without the Naga Siren. If they just go... Or even, you know, just pick up... The, pick up ideally, obviously, just kill the Naga Siren. But um, if you just fight in... Top tower if you outnumber the opponents, tower. it's an easy kill, really. Yep. Phantom Lancer is really strong right now. Nyx Assassin can set up for any kill. As I say that though, diving past the tier one, tier two tower is not that easy. Should be still be able to get the kill. Yeah, the dust oh, set already. Oh. They're fine, March. A little bit of a break, right? That's all that we're really looking for. Technically speaking, like, all right, you you get an offlane kill with a five-man rotation. Dagestan still pushing out the other lanes. Like, it's <clears throat> it's not really all that efficient in grand scheme of things. But considering the way that this Radiant game has been going up until this point, with all of this momentum building up and up Radiant for King Fam. Just having that as a bit of a break in between something coming your way can make a huge difference. Especially since I also had the lane already in position to claim the tier 2. And now, even feeling confident enough to go higher ground. I'm not sure about this one here. There's still an Aegis on a gyrocopter, but they're gonna go deep on to, uh, with all of these illusions, Decay coming through. Farm still very much alive, kicking. Oh, gyrocopter dropping low and low. Now global silence. There's the uh, Omni Knight ultimate. They're actually cutting down the support lineup here. Ollie almost dead, but not quite. Yuan with his ultimate. Phantom Lancer doesn't quite get in range for another. Spirit Lance comes into the back. They're coming it up again with the call down. Stun will connect though onto the Gyrocopter. He already respawned with the Aegis, but now there it is. The wards from Shadow Shaman. Hex coming through. And just needs to find a shackles on the right title. Maybe a punch from Tasta. Clean through walls extremely quickly. They're all actually still very much alive on the side of DNC. Geek fam just being run over in their own base. There it is. Finally, one kill, but only on the Nyx Assassin. Mid only. Full health, full mana, and Tusk in a lot of trouble himself. Is this what is happening? At least one set of racks. It's um, a actually, they can only go for one set of racks because the tier 2 towers are still up on the other lanes. But insane fight. And honestly, TNC played this so well. They knew they how how they could play it and by dropping the global Radiant's almost early on they were attack. able to get the supports because the Naga was unable to re reset yeah. and it forced out the buyback from the from the undying and it was just a very scrappy fight from from geek fam because i don't think they wanted to take the fight as early as as tnc forced yeah. them to they were not ready for that they really really weren't and then when the when the naga siren did drop the ultimate they only had the call down to really couple it up with yeah. the undying was in a really bad position because they had to tp in didn't have a tombstone and then they just turned around and killed them again. So, very strong play here from TNC, and it swings the momentum in a completely different direction. Yeah. Talk about the Skullcraft earlier, right back to where it was. It's really, really crazy considering how uh, how Geek Fam had complete control of this game, and they are the ones who lose Rex two minutes later. How often do you see that in Dota? And they also show why this Naga, or why Naga Siren in general just doesn't want to fight this early on. Naga Siren was completely useless in the fight, apart from the ultimate. Yeah. And she died really, really quickly right. as well. Things change now though, because the Manta Star is online. So Global Silence will not be enough to keep that, uh, uh, keep that song the Siren at bay anymore. That is definitely very important. She, oh my god, that would have been a completely different fight if she had, uh, if she had, had the Manta Star yeah. available earlier. It's just us they're pinging it out perfectly yet again. <laughs> Their sentry coverage has been on point, really. Yeah. They always kind of know, I mean, they have to know where Tim's is, right? They have to make sure to keep tabs on this Nyx Assassin because effectively, Nyx Assassin is just gathering information for TNC to play around. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Kettleball will die, but the very can play can even outrange the tower on a Medusa. Radiance but Nagasai is doing a good job, cutting the crew with the, with the illusions already, so yeah, yeah, you get the tier 2, but you can't even 
even if you wanted to, you could even push. Husk is also keeping the top lane pushed out, so TNC can't really do anything right now. There's not a no objective uh, for them to take. Tal's gonna take some chip damage even. So uh, that, that's the other thing, right? That we haven't really talked about this map control power that the Nagasan brings you, uh, especially with this, these kind of items already, and then eventually once you have that Octarine core. But for now, John actually going for some more damage with the Diffusal Blade and. I actually like that too, right? You do need that secondary source of damage. Gyrocopter, even though he does have the act, he does have the Maelstrom, so it's very efficient um, damage if he stays alive in team fights. It's not going to be enough against Medusa as well as the Phantom Lance on all of his looters. Yeah, and the thing is, the Maelstrom acts as much as it is obviously good against the uh, against the against the Phantom Lancer. It's also just more of a farming kind of build. Yeah. In a way, it's very similar to the Radiance, where it just you know it just sets you up for other items really. It's just a farming tool in a way. So he also needs at least one more item or two to re be really be yeah. able to fight. And yeah, he has the BKB queued up. He definitely needs it. He was slowed up so much in the last engagement. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Looks like TNC is going to push uh, the top lane. Radiant can't really Radiant's do the same because there's still attack. a tier 1. I mean, they're going to take the tier 1, right? Yeah. But that's Radiant's not an optimal trade, of course. Suddenly going to have to respond to this one. All the ultimates are up and running again Dyer's now for both teams. Apart from wards, yeah, they've attack. just been used with tier 1 tower. We do have March still hanging around, but now TPing back. How do you engage into this if you geek fam? You kind of can't. Kind of have to wait for them to jump in and you just re respond. Again, use the reset button effectively. Yeah. yeah, you can zone them out with, you know, decays, soul ribs, and whatnot, but it's so difficult right now. Do so with Ascadi. This is the timing for the Dusa to be joining these fights. We talked about this yesterday. When does the Dusa really come online? When do you want to fight with the Dusa? 30 minutes Radiant's when she has a Scotty or the Butterfly up. Uh, and Scotty is a much better item in this game here. She's in a very fighting position. But knowing TNC, they might just fall back or might fake the, uh, fake the retreat. But generally speaking, I do think they should wait for Roshan before they attempt another high ground, of, uh, high ground push. Try. Gonna get lucky with that as well if they realize it. Very quick respawn. Might just uh, park the courier there on the way back. But now they're still coming in with the siege. Starting to become a little bit more tricky, but back to region is being taken care of. So they finish up the tier 3 tower with these cores sitting on the high ground. Hex coming through on a Phantom Lancer. Thinking about it here before her lost range tracks. So much damage coming through from Medusa already. Even the Crimson Guard from uh, someone. Oh god, find a stun. That's Tyrek yeah, down. Alright. And they lose the Rax. And they might lose Fam. This is just like. <laughs> not even that, that much, much of an exciting Dark fight to just kill one by one. There's not a whole lot of Geek Fam can do about it. I mean, Phantom Lance are just. He himself, the heart, he's so freaking strong too. Snowball comes through with the Bible from Jarakov. They need to take a fight, they need to win a fight right now. If they want to stay in this game, the call down, slowing them down on absolutely everybody but another stun on Jarakov. He's not going to bring in any more damage. Buyback from March, but it's all done to Medusa, and that's not exactly the kind of fight that you can take at this point. That is like Two heroes game. down, yeah. You can, I, tell that yeah, was, you can tell that Geekman wasn't sure how to approach the fight because they have the song and the siren and the Tosca is just running around. They're like, wait, do we fight this? And they yeah. have to wait for the Jackal to buy back. Like, he has to be the one to pull the trigger and be like, alright, we have to fight this. Like, he bought back way too late and then they lose the Jark uh, they lose the Tosca and then it was basically over. Yeah. Um, TNC just... Honestly, you can tell that they were the more experienced, more composed teams. Like, uh, more composed team. They didn't really get w too worried about... You know, losing that one fight and um, giving giving an advantage to Geek Fam. They do. All right, we just you know smoke up, take a kill, maybe force a high ground fight. We are the team that peaks earlier because the Nagasai needs more time to come online. Yeah. And I think this is, I mean, or this is definitely why I was so skeptical about this here and uh, pick up in the first place. It's, it's so much different than the Dusa, right? Yep. On the the Dusa can be much more active. She is much stronger at the same time as well. And the Naga Siren, while being able to push out those waves, doesn't really deal well with these sieges. And as much as as much as DNC didn't necessarily have good heroes against the Naga Siren illusions, what did Geek Fam have against the Phantom Lance illusions, yep. right? That's the other thing, right? I mean. Uh, that's just the mark of a really good team, right? 
TNC, they had a strat. They were not faced by just being uh, romped like that, like Geekfam did, did to them, right? They they got Roshan, got a couple of team fights, uh, a couple of kills, a couple of towers, and qu very quick succession. But TNC, as I said, they just say, all right, whatever. We, we're still on our timing. We still know what we need to do to win this game. That's exactly what they did, right? And uh, as a result, 30 minutes all it took. For game number one, or 32 minutes, I should say. Um, for game number one to go into their pocket, that means the Geek Fam only one game away from elimination. We'll see what happens in game two. That'll be happening in just a couple of minutes. Don't go too far away.